Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple examples of populating an array with values from the user. So in particular, this program creates an array of size 5 designed to hold five ages. So you can see that at the very top, this first statement declares very, or I'm sorry, array ages of size 5. And it sets the values, the elements, within that array to all zeros. So remember, each value within an array uh, is referred to as an element. So the reason why I set them all to zero at the beginning is because later in the program, we're going to update those values. But we're going to let the user provide the ages. We're going to get them one by one and update each of these elements. Constant size here is going to be used to refer to the size of our array, and sum is going to be used to store each age's sum. So we're going to basically sum all those ages together so that at the end of the program, after we get all five ages, we can calculate the average age and display it. We need a way to point to or refer to each element in the array. Recall that the values themselves, they're elements, but we can refer to those elements within the array based on their position. First position in an array um, is zero, and we refer to that as an index or a subscript. So we have a variable here called index that we will use in our for loop. We'll say start index at zero and go up to four. Four is the last position in a five element array because remember, uh, the indexing always starts at zero. So we're going to say start index at zero and go to four. Each time through the loop, add one to index. Now the reason why we do that is because we want to use this for loop to be able to always get the next age from the user and then put that age or assign that age to the next open spot in the array. So we'll start at the beginning of the array. Index is zero, so after we ask the user for the, the age, we will input that age. Notice to the right of the input statement, we are assigning it to a position within the array. Ages index is an expression that actually evaluates to ages sub zero, because index is zero. And if you recall from the last video, ages sub zero refers to the first position in the array. So it's updating that first position, this guy here, to whatever the age was that the user specified. And then it takes that value again. Here we're referring to it again and adds it to the running sum to update our sum. So index the second time through this loop, we're going to loop back around. Index becomes 1. We ask again for an age. And this time we're going to input it to ages sub 1. So that's going to update the second element in our array. And that pattern continues until we loop through the entire array. Down here, we're going to calculate the average. We're going to divide that sum by 5 and then output the value. Another example of looping through and populating an array is this one. I wanted to use an example that wasn't numeric. So this particular example uses an array of strings, and the strings represent people's names. So I created an array of strings at the very top. Notice the data type of the array is string. Names is the name of my array, and three indicates that this array is size three. And I initialized the array to just um, empty, empty strings. Okay, so that's what we're doing with these double quotes separated by commas. It's initializing um, every element in this array to an empty string. So one of the things I kind of want to remind the group is that when you loop through an array, we're going to use the same approach as we did in the last example, but you have a choice. You can either use a for loop or a while loop. We're using counter-controlled logic, and counter-controlled logic can either be accomplished with a for loop or a while loop. So just for a basis of comparison, in this example, I deliberately used a while loop just to show how that would be accomplished. So we still want to loop through, get a name, uh, and update each element of the array with the new name provided by the user. So how would we do that? 
we have to uh, initialize our loop control variable index to zero. And while that index is less than or equal to two, now why did I choose two? Remember, the size of this array is three. Okay, so that means the first element in the loop is at position zero, then one, then two. So the last element is actually at index two. So this expression, while index less than or equal to two, um, ensures that we stay within the bounds of the array. Another way to do this would be to say while index is less than three. That would have worked as well. So we're going to use the same approach as the last example. Inside the loop, we prompt the user for a name. We input the name the user provided, such as Rebecca. And uh, let's say the user typed Rebecca. This next statement, input names index. Again, this is because index is zero the first time through, is referring to name sub zero. So in that case, had the user typed in Rebecca, this first element in the array would be updated to Rebecca. Now remember, while loops don't automatically update their loop control variable, as as we saw with the for loop, for loop updates it automatically with the step value. So therefore, we have to be aware that index needs to be incremented. Um, usually this happens as the last step in the loop. Therefore, when we loop back around for a second pass, now index is equal to one. So again, we continue this pattern. Um, once index becomes three, we exit the loop. Now, for this example, I wanted to show something different. If after we had already gotten all of the names, we wanted to loop through and print those names out. Again, we could use a while loop, but for the basis of comparison, this time I used a for loop just to show what that would look like. We can reuse the same index variable as long as we reset it to zero. So this for loop is indicating start index uh, at zero, go to two, and step one. Since in this loop, all I needed to do was output every element in the array, I simply need an output statement that refers to um, each element. Names subindex here is exactly what I need because the first time through, again, we will be working with names sub zero. So that would output my first element in the array. And then index will be incremented and we'll loop back around and so forth. It will go through and print out all three elements in the array.